All right, it's that time again to answer your Facebook questions about the coronavirus. And joining us once again is the Lieutenant Governor and the state's COVID-19 liaison, Dr. Josh Green. All right, Doc, ready for these questions? You bet. Go for it. All right. Shane wants to bring up a very popular and hot topic right now. As a doctor, what's your reaction to Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers contracting COVID after lying to the public, saying he was vaccinated when he wasn't, and getting advice from Joe Rogan and taking other treatments for COVID? Well, I think that Rodgers should stick to third down conversions and not to public health, first of all. Ivermectin is good if you've got lice or worms, but not for COVID. And look, I think people need to, if they're leaders, if they're celebrity figures, they got to get good facts if they're going to speak up on public health matters. Listen to Fauci on public health. Listen to Rogers on third down conversions. <laughs> now, just to clarify, Rogers said, quote, to my knowledge, there has been zero long term studies around sterility or fertility issues around the vaccine. Is that true or false? That's false. All of the studies that have been going on are assessing people's reaction to the uh, medication, to the vaccination from the beginning. And remember, it's not just very young people, it's adolescents, people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. We've not seen that at all. Also, RNA vaccinations do not work in that way. So I think that this is just kind of fear mongering and, and fear tactics by some people on the internet. Again, I don't have anything against uh, Rodgers except for the one Super Bowl he beat my Steelers in, but he should stay out of public health. And just to clarify, because a lot of people, like you said, will listen to people like Aaron Rodgers. He also said, quote, I've been taking monoclonal antibodies and ivermectin. Are these approved and recommended treatments? Monoclonal antibodies are actually treat, uh, treatments of choice for some people before they have severe disease. The main treatments are remdesivir, which is an antiviral medication. The most important thing to do is to get vaccinated before you ever catch COVID or get a severe case. Because as you know, almost all of our fatalities, about 98% of our fatalities, have been among people who were not vaccinated. But yes, monoclonal antibodies are okay, but not ivermectin in this case. All right, sir. Roger stick to third down conversions. And he still has that one Super Bowl title in 2010 over your Steelers. Janet has the next question. She wants to know any update on when kids under five will be eligible to get a shot. And do you think it's safe for kids to get the shots that young? Well, it's not a priority yet. I've actually been seeing my old pediatrician in my travels, and he's often given me good advice over the years. Right now, we're focused on just 5 to 11, ages 5 to 11. There are studies going on right now with Pfizer and Moderna and all of the different vaccinations across the world. But people who have been very young have not gotten sick. So the under age 5 have been very few and far between for severe illness. I've treated two children personally that were under one with COVID, but neither required hospitalization. So that's not our focus yet. It's very possibly they'll authorize something in the spring, but I just right now focus on the five to 11 year olds. Now, Kimmy wants to know, and I think you touched on this earlier, is Japan on the list of countries that have opened up and when can we travel to Japan? Yes, well, Japan is a part of the international travel rules that we start today on the 8th. But the difference is when you travel to Japan, there is a significant quarantine. I believe it's 10 days. So they have not yet lifted that quarantine on travel from the United States, whether it's us or people going back uh, for the Japanese travelers that have come to Hawaii and then going back home. And that does prove to be an impediment. Eventually, Japan will open up completely. As you know, Hawaii's got the second lowest rate of COVID in the country. Our positivity rates down to 1.65 percent. We have less than 70 people in the hospital. So we're doing so well. I think a lot of these countries are going to realize that Hawaii is the right place to travel to safely and allow their residents to return without any kind of quarantine. And the last question is from Stephanie. She wants to know when it comes to the vaccine for five to 11 years old, do they require two shots or just one? And looking ahead, will they also need boosters? Yes, they have the same protocol. It's two shots for children five to 11 three weeks apart for the Pfizer vaccination. It's at uh, just 30 microgram dose, so it's a third the dose of what was given to adults, and they will likely need a booster six months later. But for now, getting that immunity will make a big difference so there's no spread in schools or to their parents or grandparents. It's a good thing to do for the public health of our state, but it's a deeply personal decision, and they should call their pediatricians and get advice there. All right, there you have it, the Lieutenant Governor. I was always, thank you so much for answering our viewer questions. and. Steelers are playing tonight, so best of luck. <laughs> Thank you, brother.